During the PlayStation 5 reveal event, the first look at Deathloop's gameplay was shown, and naturally, due to Arcane Studios pedigree, it looks absolutely insane. I can't remember the last time I watched a gameplay trailer this much in anticipation of a new release, and now it's time to put that viewing to good use as we examine the gameplay itself and seek out any small details and tidbits that we can. So without further introduction, let's jump straight into it. The trailer begins by showing the same mysterious device at the center of the island that we saw in the reveal trailer, and it seems to be emitting some sort of bright glow, almost like the northern lights, which could be a visual cue to indicate that the time loop is currently in effect. Next, we see Colt, our main protagonist, and what looks like a neon casino environment of some kind, followed by Colt loading bullets into a strange firearm. Gotta say, pouring your ammo into your gun is pretty unorthodox, but still cool nonetheless. Then we see a few of the island's goons that we will be encountering throughout the game, including these characters wearing wolf masks of some kind, but we'll return to them later. We're then shown Colt exiting some sort of sewer or back alley, and we briefly see a machine labeled Candy Blue Beetle. Maybe this is some kind of station that allows for item pickups of some kind, maybe health, or an item to refill your power meter for Colt's special abilities that we'll be seeing momentarily. As Colt exits the passageway, we get our first true glimpse of the bright orange colors that appear throughout the trailer, marking the signature art style of Arcane Studios. In this case, a highly exaggerated 1960s style that draws a few parallels to their work on the Dishonored series. Now we see Colt using the same weapon he was loading bullets into earlier, which for the sake of this video, we will be calling the Mako. The Mako appears to be at first glance some kind of pistol and small sidearm as Colt is only using one hand to wield it. As he fires a round into the back of an enemy's head, the body disappears in a flash, which could mean that Colt has a skill similar to Shadow Kill from Dishonored, wherein if you assassinate an enemy, their body turns to ash, leaving no evidence for other characters to find and making a stealth run that much easier. Or, this could be an indication that stealth is not going to be heavily focused on as much in Deathloop as it has been in the Dishonored series, which is something that the rest of this trailer seems to indicate as Colt takes an action-heavy approach to the combat encounters, which we'll also be seeing momentarily. Okay, now we're seeing the device that Colt has on his left hand that allows him to use his special abilities much like the Outsider's Mark in Dishonored. Here he's using what seems to be the Deathloop equivalent to the Blink ability, as the device itself separates into individual pieces, allowing him to teleport a short distance to reach higher ground in order to further survey his surroundings. It looks like Arcane is carrying the drop assassination over from Dishonored as well, as we see here. Colt is spotted by the nearby enemies, and one of them, a female, taunts him by shouting, hope you're ready to loop, as he blinks in front of the first enemy and subsequently plunges what looks like some kind of machete into his skull, something that you could also do with Corvo's blade in Dishonored which never gets old. Now we're getting our first look at another power that Colt has, a push ability. However, strangely enough, the device on his hand is conspicuously absent when he uses this power on this poor unfortunate soul. Perhaps Colt has been affected by the time loop at a molecular level? Maybe the device on his hand helps him control these powers and doubles as a story device that provides more depth for his character? Maybe it keeps him from being torn apart by the fabric of time itself due to the constant distortion distortion of time on Black Reef Island. Okay, now we're taking a look at some new firearms, a dual set of glittery pistols that Colt quickly whips out and blasts this enemy with. Then, in a shockingly awesome turn of events, he combines the two pistols into a mid-range rifle or SMG of some kind to gun down an enemy on the nearby balcony. Speaking of the glittery camo, does this confirm weapon skins as a form of customization for the player? I think the answer is yes. Unfortunately, this showcase of bad Badassery is quickly put to a stop by a henchman who manages to sneak up on Colt and blasts him at point-blank range with a shotgun, which then resets the time loop back to where Colt started initially, the black sandy beaches of Black Reef Island. How did he end up there, and why does the loop always take him back to that particular spot? I'm sure it will be explained during the course of the story. 
Now we're seeing more of those henchmen with the wolf masks who appear to be part of some sort of enemy faction on the island. The other goons that Colt fought earlier and the ones that we're seeing now are wearing different outfits, so the idea of different factions makes sense and also would provide some gameplay variety as each faction could have its own set of weapons, tactics, and abilities. It would seem that Deathloop is going to be far more focused on first-person shooting than anything Arcane has done in the past, as we see Colt has a decent variety of fire arms to choose from, a revolver, another pistol of some kind, an SMG, and a lever action rifle slash shotgun. It also seems like the push power we saw earlier is actually omnidirectional in some ways, meaning Colt can toss his enemies from side to side as we witness this fellow being launched out the nearby window in spectacular fashion. Then we see Colt wielding another new weapon, a shotgun which decimates this enemy before he jumps over the ledge and blinks to another enemy in a room below him. One thing I noticed here is that Colt appears to be floating in mid-air before he completes his blink move, which seems to indicate that there might be a passive ability like in Dishonored, where when you use blink, as long as you're not moving, time will freeze and allow you to redirect your blink to another location. Obviously, time doesn't freeze for Colt here, but the same principles apply based on what we see. As Colt lifts his next opponent in the air, his lever action rifle morphs, which indicates some kind of weapon upgrade system or some kind of alternate fire mode for the lever action rifle specifically. Then we see a collage of puzzle pieces showing what I presume to be the eight targets Colt needs to eliminate to stop the time loop. Their names are also presumably the ones listed in the credits of the trailer, which we'll be getting to soon. This target in particular goes by the name of Alexis the Wolf Dorsey, and as Colt sneaks up behind him, machete in hand, we cut away to the true antagonist of Deathloop, watching from afar, Juliana Blake, the protector of Black Reef and the Time Loop itself. And a real pain in my ass. She may kill me a million times, but eventually, inevitably, I will break this fucking loop. We then see more B-roll footage of the gameplay in action. Nothing too notable here, except for this decapitation which looks super similar to some of the kill animations in Dishonored. As we near the end of the trailer here, the credits pop up, and we now have the names of our eight targets, members of some sort of group called the Visionaries. Ramblin' Frank Spicer, Igor Serling, Harriet Morse, Dr. Wenji Evans, Charlie Montague, Fia Zborowska, and the big bad wolf himself, Alexis Dorsey, along with the other side of the assassin coin, Juliana Blake. As the trailer finally comes to a close, we are shown a brief glimpse of what Juliana's perspective looks like, and our suspicions are now confirmed that both assassins are playable in what is, in my mind, Arcane's successor to and combination of the Crossing and Prey Moon Crash. Arcane is taking the idea of invading another player's single player campaign from the Crossing years prior and applying it to their newest title, which is something I had suspected they would do for some time as while Bethesda has gone back to more single-player focused experiences, there is also a company mandate to have a multiplayer component of some sort. And it looks like Deathloop will execute that concept beautifully if Arcane's previous work is any indication. Why did I mention Prey Moon Crash? Well, that DLC seems to have been the testing ground for the roguelike elements we'll be seeing in Deathloop, as I think they're following Mooncrash's model of resetting the player after every death, but allowing them to keep any earned knowledge, experience points, and abilities on their next run through the simulation, or in this case, the player's next run through Black Reef Island. This information is further confirmed by the Bethesda.net article, which accompanied this gameplay trailer, and I'll be posting a link link to that same article in the description so that you can see for yourself. Other than that, the game has shown in just a 3 minute gameplay trailer that Arcane is in top form and will no doubt be delivering another diamond in the rough with Deathloop. 
Also, we now have a more solid release window of Holiday 2020, which makes me think that Bethesda will shoot for either the October or November slot for this game, much like they did with Dishonored and Dishonored 2. Well, that's everything that I noticed in this trailer, but now I want to know what you thought of Deathloop's first gameplay trailer. Did you find it entertaining or dull? Are you hyped or simply so-so on the game? What did you notice in the trailer that perhaps I missed? Leave your comments down below and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And remember that the outsider walks among us. Thanks for watching.